Hello folks, Major Gosnell here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a closed loop mining system in Factorio. Now this will be a coal mining system. Now forgive the darkness of the actual map at the moment, it is currently nighttime on the map. However, if you look around, you're going to see a coal deposit up here and an iron deposit down here. We're going to link the two up and have an automated mining system running. So the first thing you're going to want to do to make it easy for yourself is to plock down a mining drill on the iron ore. So, drop it down here like this. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your furnace right next to it. Now, a little trick a lot of people don't know is if you put the furnace directly next to the mining drill's output, it'll feed directly into the actual furnace. Now, we're going to need some fuel to get this running. So, we're going to run all the way down here. And we're going to cut down some trees. So, early on in the game, you're going to have to use wood as fuel before you start mining coal. Wood is fairly easy to gather and just makes the whole thing a lot more efficient. You could try mining some coal, but it takes nearly twice as long. Ooh, got a nice bit of wood from that one actually. It's gonna get started there now. Now the reason we go for iron first is the iron creates iron plates. When you start a new game, you only have enough iron plates for one mining drill. Which means if you go for coal first, you're going to have to manually mine the iron to build your second drill, and that takes a goddamn age. So we're going to get this one up and running here now. Okay, that should be enough gold, uh, gold <laughs> enough wood for the time being. So you're going to go back up here, you're going to split your wood by right-clicking on it, and dragging up here into the fuel box. Now then you're going to click on this and drop the rest of the wood into your furnace's fuel. Now that's going to produce iron plates for you. So we're going to get that up and running there now in just a few seconds. Do Now we're just going to check the cost of building another drill. Now another drill also requires stone. Now stone, you need five of those to build a stone furnace, which enables you to build another drill. This is the part that you have to actually do kind of manually. So now we're just going to take a quick look around the map here and see if we have a stone deposit that we can gather some stone in. And we do, down here in the right hand corner. So we're just going to run on down here and gather some stone. Do, 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 do. Okay, zooming in. Now this is what I mean about the mining ore manually. It takes a very, very long time. So we're going to get five of these. Four, and we should have five in five, four, three. I can't count. Do, do, do. And we're going to run back up to our little outpost up here. Now, by this time, we should have enough iron plates for our second drill bit. So we're going to click on our furnace here and take our iron plates, which is quite a lot actually. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our crafting, it's the second menu over in production, and we're going to build another burner mining drill. So we're going to run up here, and we're going to plank this one down. So, do do do, and press 1 to place it. Right. Now we're going to place that mining drill here. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is build some tracks so we can link up the two uh, furnaces. So, do do do, do do do, do do do, do do. So build a few there. Probably need a few more iron plates before it'll be uh, long enough to actually connect to two. Next thing you're going to want to build, though, is you're going to want to build a burner inserter. So we're going to build one of those. Actually, we're going to build two of those. We're going to need one for the iron drill down here as well. So, here we go. We may actually need three. I just realized we need for the furnace as well. So, what we're going to do is we are going to plonk down one of the burner inserters. Now, when you're placing inserters, make sure the arrow is facing the item that you want to drop coal into, and the line is facing where the resources are going to be collected from. As you can see, you can rotate it by pressing R. So you're going to plunk down your burner inserter, like so, and you're going to place your tracks along here. Place it here. I'm going to put a little bend here. As you can see, the conveyor belt is going to pass the burner and the burner inserter will actually feed the coal that's being produced back into the drill 
and keep it running. It'll also feed itself coal to keep itself running. Now, we're going to make this a little sneaky and drop this down here like so. And if you hold down the left click button, you can actually drag it along as well. Now we're going to need a few more iron plates here. And we actually will need a little bit of fuel here. So we're going to run down here and cut down some more trees. However, we're going to be really, really smart here. And instead of putting this back into the iron drill, we are going to put this into the coal drill and start producing fuel straight away. And that will be automated straight away for us as well. So, we're going to drop fuel in there. There we go. Now, you could, if you wanted, have put some of the wood in here as well. But there's probably no need. And if you press F as you're running along the conveyor belt, you're going to pick up some of that coal. Do, 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 do. do we have coal? We do. So we're going to run down here. We're going to drop the coal into this and start producing some more iron ore. Now we have enough to produce a few more of the conveyor belt parts. And that should be the right level there now. We're going to drag this over like so. As you can see the coal is starting to pile up here as well. Now we're nearly there with our self-sufficient drilling system. I'm just going to bring over this thing over here once we have the parts. Six. Da -da. Okay, and there we go. A little bit further, we're nearly there. Now while we're waiting for that, we're going to place our inserters again. And we actually put that line a little too close uh, one level up higher than I wanted it. So we're actually going to have to turn the conveyor belt a little bit as well. So, put that like that. Do, do, do. Ooh, we have run out of fuel again. But we have fuel here because I'm a genius. Well, I pretend to be. To myself. I have issues. We're going to drop that in there, like so. Now, just produce three more of those, and every time you click on the conveyor belt to be built, it actually produces two portions, so it's always a useful thing to know as well. Nearly there now. Go produce one more inserter, and one more does. Yeah, it did, 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 did. And that goes there like that. Then we're going to produce conveyor belt. We need one more conveyor belt before it's fully self-sufficient. So we're going to drop that there. And we're going to produce one more conveyor belt. Like so. Now, as you can see, our burner inserters here are going to drop the coal into the drill here and into the furnace here. Up here, the mining drill is operating automatically as the inserter here drops the coal directly into the mining drill. The burners will feed themselves as well, as long as they are picking up a fuel item, and they will keep themselves going as well. So that is how you create a closed loop production system. So thanks for watching guys, and I hope this was somewhat useful for you.